Happy New Year, children. Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where Roger and I have some unfinished business for 2022. Yes, the last video of 2022, where we have to do the weekend reading report, where I talk about all the exciting things that I had read during the week. You know, it's thrilling stuff, let me tell you, as always. So what did I read this past week? Well, I did finish three books. I finished reading three books. So for the 500 book challenge, that brings me up to 15, I think. I think it's 15. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it's 15. Maybe. I'll double check. I think it's 15. So the 500 book challenge, of course, is the challenge where I have to read 500 books I already own before I buy any new ones. It will go on and on forever. But I did read some really good stuff this week. The first book I read was on my Kindle and had been sitting on my Kindle for a while. Shockingly, I don't have a physical copy of this book, which boggles my mind because I really should. And that is Harry Harrison's Death World. This is a really fun, action-packed science fiction adventure about a gambler with psychic powers, so he kind of cheats. A gambler with psychic powers who goes to the most dangerous planet in the universe. The human beings on this planet are constantly being attacked by every single life form on the planet. Everything on this planet is trying to kill the people that live there. You'd think they'd move, but no, they're determined to stay. And so they become highly militarized, and all they do is attempt to kill the creatures on this planet and the plants on this planet who are all trying to kill them all the time. Why? Well, that is part of the plot of this really fast-paced, entertaining novel by Harry Harrison. I had read the Stainless Steel Rat books when I was a teenager. I, well, I read three of them, and I remember, remember really liking all of them. But uh, this book, I had never read, I don't think. I don't think I have, because I don't remember, I didn't remember a thing about it when I started it, and I really liked it. Really good book. So yeah, Death World by Harry Harrison. I highly recommend it. That was a lot of fun. Next, I'm going to be talking about a book that I read that doesn't count for the 500 book challenge because it's a comic book. And I'm going to talk about the comic books I read from now on, on the week, weekend reading report, because, you know, why not? So I had some time free on Christmas Day. I was all alone because the lady of the manor had to work that day. So I had a few hours to myself. So I thought I would entertain myself by reading one of my very favorite comic books of all time, The Rocketeer by Dave Stevens. This is the deluxe edition, The Complete Adventures of the Rocketeer in this nice slipcase. You might remember The Rocketeer from the 1991 film, which was actually pretty good. But it started off as this comic book by Dave Stevens, and it's beautiful. This is just a beautiful, beautiful comic book. Uh, the artwork is amazing. It's just incredible stuff. There's the most famous scene, I think, out of <laughs> this book. Everything in here is just gorgeous. Uh, a lot of fun, this comic book. It's really, really cool. So, it's a really cool comic book. So, this has both of the graphic novels that Dave Stevens did, uh, that Dave Stevens wrote and drew for The Rocketeer. He only did two stories for The Rocketeer, and that was it. And the reason for that is, I believe, is that he just was really, really really slow. It took him a long time to draw his beautiful pictures. And in fact, in the second story, he needed help to finish it. So he gets some help from some other artists who are really good artists. And you could barely tell, but you can tell in certain spots that he didn't draw everything in the second story. But this also has a ton of extras, uh, a ton of extras. There's Betty Page there, uh, who he modeled the leading lady on. And Dave Stevens and Betty Page actually became friends in real life. 
because he was one of the first people who insisted on paying her for her likeness, which he used. And uh, he was able to get other people to pay for using her likeness because everybody used Betty Page's used Betty Page as a model for their drawings and everything. She was very popular after this series came out. It led to kind of uh, a rediscovery of Betty Page. This is fantastic in, in so many ways. And I had a great time reading it on Christmas. And actually, when Steve Donahue comes back from his hiatus, Epic Comic Book Wednesday will be all about this. So I will talk more about this in more detail on a future Epic Comic Book Wednesday. The next actual book I read was for the Edgar Rice Burroughs Deep Dive, which is continuing, and that was this one, The Monster Men by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is a lot of fun. And you know what? I forgot to haul out the Edgar Rice Burroughs biography, which I'm reading also. I'll talk about that in a bit, but I'm talking about this right now. So The Monster Men by Edgar Rice Burroughs, the closest thing Edgar Rice Burroughs ever came to a horror novel. So pulpy. This is just so pulpy and enjoyable. I really, it's not the greatest book in the world. It is certainly not his finest work, but it is a lot of fun, I have to say. Fast paced, monster filled fun about a mad scientist who takes his daughter to this small island uh, near Borneo where since he's a mad scientist, he's trying to create life. So he grows these monster men in a vat, in these different vats. And they all turn up, turn out misshapen and horrible, of course. Except for one who turns into the perfect man. He's the perfect man. But he's still, since he is a creation of this scientist, a man without a soul. And he is only known as number 13. But he is good and noble and perfect. He's perfect. Even though, you know, he's a monster man. So, it's an interesting book. It's a lot of fun. It has some interesting characters in it. The most boring character is our hero, number 13. He's, he's as dull as they come as far as heroes go. But there are some other interesting characters. Um, the villain is really, really good. Dr. Carl Van Horn. He's interesting because unlike most... Edgar Rice Burroughs villains, he is not a black and white villain. He actually has some decency and some scruples. They're just submerged in his greed. So he's not all bad, but he is pretty villainous just because, yeah, he's really, really greedy and his greed overshadows everything. But still, an interesting character, and one of his more realistic villains. Really good character, Dr. Van Horn. And then there is Virginia, the scientist's daughter. And I've been realizing, rereading some of Edgar Rice Burroughs' books for the, the deep dive so far, I'm realizing something I didn't really appreciate the first time I read these when I was a teenager, and that is that... Edgar Rice Burroughs' female characters are actually pretty strong characters. They're always being rescued, so you, you might think that they wouldn't be, but actually, yeah, they're pretty tough and independent and strong characters. Edgar Rice Burroughs seemed to like that, and so all of his, or a lot of his female characters, including Deja Thoris, Jane, although not so much in the first Tarzan book, but Jane becomes a pretty strong character. We've had the cave girl who was really strong. She pretty much saved the hero's life multiple times in that book. And now we have Victoria, who is one of the most heroic characters in this book, really. Uh, she's very brave, very tough, uh, really good character. And then there is a character called uh, Sing Li. Sing Li, who is the Chinese cook. Now, it must be admitted that Sing Li... Is a he is a Chinese character in a pulp story. And as you would expect, every single stereotypical depiction that they could that Edgar Rice Burroughs could use for this character is 
used. He has the ridiculous broken English uh, that is f phonetically described ridiculously, and he is described as a Chinaman and a celestial because that's an old tiny term that they used to use for Chinese immigrants because they came from the celestial empire. So he's called that multiple times. So you have all of that going on, but there is one pretty stark difference between this Chinese character and most of the Chinese characters that you'll find in Pulp Fiction in that this character, Sing Li, is depicted as being brave, intelligent, self-sacrificing, and heroic. He is one of the major good guys in this story. He is a heroic character, which is interesting because that is very different than you usually get in pulp stories where they're just, you know, usually villainous and mischievous and all of those other bad things. So while you have all of these stereo stereotypical depictions of this guy, he's also, he's also very clearly an admirable person. He's noble and he's, you know, one of the major good guys in this, in this story. And one of the most interesting characters, frankly. So it's an interesting book with some interesting stuff in it. And I've probably gone on long enough about the Monster Men. Next, the next book I read, and I am counting this as one book, even though it's an ace double, because both the stories are really short. This is Planetary Agent X by Mac Reynolds. There's Planetary Agent X on the cover doing something he never does in the story, of course. This is about an agent in the future who, he's kind of like an interstellar G-man. It's interesting. Now this, in, Planetary Agent X is actually two different stories that are stuck together to form a novel, even though the stories really don't have anything to do with each other plot-wise, except that Agent X is in both of them. The first one is pretty good, um, and it actually had a twist that I didn't see coming, so I appreciated that. The second one was really kind of a, a manhunt story where Agent X is trying to track down this assassin, but he's doing it on Earth, when you think you'd be doing it in outer space or on another planet, he does it. The whole thing takes place on Earth as part of the story. And it could have been just a regular crime story, really. But it had some science fiction-y stuff in it. Not that great, really. But you flip it over and we get to Behold the Stars by Kenneth Bulmer. And this one was really good. I like this one a lot. Both of these stories are really pulpy, but... This one was a lot of fun about a future where space exploration is achieved through these boxes which can teleport you instantly to, it doesn't matter how far the distance. Wherever you put these boxes, no matter how far away it is, you can teleport there instantly. So it's kind of like, you know, beaming down to a planet in Star Trek, only you across vast distances you can go. But there's an alien race who also has similar technology and they use this technology against human beings. And how they do it is really interesting. It's a really good story. If you ever crum come across this story, if you ever cr come across this crumbling ace double anywhere, pick it up because this was pretty entertaining. I really enjoyed it. So there's three books I read and a comic book. The next... Well, actually, the book that I'm reading right now is the next Edgar Rice Burroughs book in the Mars series, the Barsoom series. This is The Warlord of Mars, the third Mars book. John Carter in some more adventures. And this is really entertaining. Uh, this is one of the best Mars stories, so I'm reading this now. Next, though, we're heading into January. So finally, it's time for the astounding science fiction project where every month I'm reading Astounding Magazine from 1951 and then in 24 it'll be Astounding Magazine 1952. 
because I have every issue from 1951 and 1952. So January 1951, I will be reading this, well, as soon as I'm done with uh, A Warlord of Mars. And I've been looking forward to doing this forever. Now, the only thing is I don't know if I should be... Well, it is... These are 160 pages long, and they're double columns, so they're full of text. So I'm going to count it as a book. I was like, should I or should I not? But it's long enough that I could. I think I could count it as a book, even though it's a magazine. I mean, it's a 70-something-year-old magazine. But I'm going to count it as a book, I think. And yeah, I'll be every month I'll be reading an issue of Astounding. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it. So that's going to be exciting. Then uh, next up after that is going to be the next Edgar Rice Burroughs book for the Edgar Rice Burroughs Deep Dive, The Mad King. The Mad King. I remember this being pretty good, actually. There's, is, could that be The Mad King there? That's a great early Frank Frazetta cover, by the way. It's pretty awesome. So, The Mad King. And after that, it's probably going to be this book because I'm anxious to read some Clark Ashton Smith, and this is... An excellent collection from Arkham House, a rendezvous in Averroine. Averroine? I don't. I have no idea still how to pronounce that word. And everybody, I, I've looked, and everybody on the internet seems to pronounce it differently. Oh well, this book is an excellent collection of Clark Ashton Smith. What's in here anyway? Yeah, we've got a lot of different stories uh, from his different series. Uh, so this will give me something to read and talk about. I'll be talking about all of the stories at different times that I read in this book, so that'll be fun. Clark Ashton Smith. This is the second edition of this, I think. It was an earlier Arkham House edition of this, and this is the second edition. I don't have the earlier one, unfortunately. And that, I guess, is all I have to say for this, my final video of the year. I hope you all have a fantastic New Year's Eve. I hope you don't get too plastered like undoubtedly Roger will. And I will see you next year, which is tomorrow. Okay, guys, see you next time. And yeah, I did forget to talk about the Edgar Rice Burroughs biography. Um, I will just say that I am up to page 160, which is around the time that uh, the return of Tarzan, we're talk they're talking about in the biography when the return of Tarzan was written, and all of the issues about the publication of that, it was initially rejected. Anyway, that's where I'm at in the biography. I'll talk more about it next week if I remember.